Jill Slavin. Um, I'm a nurse, a registered nurse and a diabetic educator. That's what the CDCES uh, is, stands for at the end of my name. Um, certified diabetes, diabetes Care and Educational Specialist is the long um, name they give to someone who actually educates people who have diabetes. Um, we have had the diabetic group for many years. I've been working on the diabetic group for, since 2015. And in 2019, at the end of the year, we had big plans for 2020 to do some different uh, things for the diabetic group. We used to meet in person at the Clinton office. And in 2020, we all know that when COVID hit, all groups were stopped. So this year we decided not to let that go any longer. We wanna do something different. So we decided to try to do these educational, clinic educational pieces where we actually do it through Zoom. And then we can archive it. So it's always there if somebody wants to refer back to it. So we're excited. This is our first one. We, we hope all the technology works with us and everything goes well. Uh, we'll do our best, I guess. I, I did send a, um, a note so you can chat, ask questions, and we'll try to get to your questions at the end. So please feel free to do that. You won't be able to actually, you know, um, say your question out loud or, you know, voice your question, raise your hand or whatever. You'll just have to send it through chat. Uh, at some point with these pr um, presentations, I want to have Dr. Rico, who's our endocrinologist here at Valley Professional. I'd like to have him on as a guest speaker. Uh, you rarely do get to talk specifically and ask specifically a, a diabetic or a board certified endocrinologist questions, but we have that benefit here at Valley Professionals, so we could use him as a resource also. So one thing I would ask is that, you know, send ideas of what you'd like for us to cover during these, or we're hoping to do this monthly, these monthly educational pieces on diabetes, send us your questions and anything you'd like to learn more about, and we can bring him in at any time if we need to. You know, I'm specifically thinking like insulin pumps, we might want to bring him in for some more information. Uh, and so, you know, just anything, think outside the box of what you'd like to learn more about. Okay, well, let's get started then. So as we go through these um, educational clinics, uh, I'm gonna be focusing mostly on the self, seven self-care behaviors that the American Association of Diabetic Edu Educators kind of focus on. And you can see all seven of them come together, kind of can make a, make a whole or make a pie. Uh, those are healthy coping, being active, healthy eating, taking medication, problem solving, reducing risk. And what we're going to focus on today is monitoring blood sugars. And what research has said is that if someone with diabetes actually does these seven things and actually follows what they're supposed to under these seven behaviors, blood sugar will be well controlled. So that's our goal. And today we're going to focus on monitoring, which is just checking your blood sugar. And there's a new kind of a new way. It's not brand new. It's been around for a while, but it's becoming more popular. And that's continuous glucose monitoring or CGMs, as we'll call them. But what you might be used to doing is checking your blood sugar using something that looks like this, a blood glucose monitor. And I just threw a bunch of different pictures on. Yours can look a whole lot different than what any of these look like. But the main thing is, is you're poking your finger with a lancet. You're actually getting blood on the glucose strip, and then the meter is telling you what your blood sugar is. And the thing to keep in mind is that blood sugar is specifically at that second when you took that blood out of you know on your finger, that specific time, that point in time. So it's one little point in time. Keep that in mind as we go through and talk more about continuous glucose monitoring. So these are some, this is what some continuous glucose monitors look like. These are the most popular, the well-known ones, and the ones we've used in our clinics here at Valley Professionals. Um, there are probably others that I'm not aware of. These are the ones I'm most familiar with. So those are the four that I wanted to focus on. And specifically, we're going to narrow it down to just three of them that are used the most. Um, but if you look at the picture and the type top left, um, there is uh, the um, Dexcom. That's the Dexcom, I think, G6. We use that one a lot. We're going to talk about that one more. Uh, the one right next to it, the one with its got the white kind of size telephone or a reader or, um, that they would call something that you would actually, you know, scan your the, the sensor for. That is called the Eversense, and it actually is implanted. There's a sensor that's implanted under the skin. We've not had that anyone do that here at Valley Professionals, but it sounds pretty cool because it actually lasts for 90 days. So that would be less sticking, less, you know, um, having to put a sensor on and take it off. Um, the one right below that is the Libre. 
We'll talk a lot about the Libre, the Freestyle Libre. And then the one next to it, again, on the bottom uh, left is the actual um, CGM or continuous glucose monitor that goes, is used mostly with the insulin pump, um, the Medtronic insulin pump, which is right behind the, the um, CGM. And you can see each one of these shows you the size of the sensors. We're gonna look at that a little bit too, because a lot of people ask how big is the sensor? And those are the little, you know, the white little things next to the, the um, actual readers. So the ones I really want to focus on today is the, are the Dexcom G6 and the Freestyle Libre, specifically the Libre 14-day and the Libre 2. The Dexcom G6, um, I want to specify that one out because there are, of course, G4 and G5. Of course, all these companies are continually making these con the continuous glucose monitors better. They're trying to outdo each other. And so right now, the Dexcom G6 is what we have, but the G7, I don't know if it's out yet, but it's on its way, and it's got some, you know, more bells and whistles that are going to make people want it over the G6. Um, and then the Libre 14-day and the Libre 2, of course, there used to be a Libre 10-day, and all that means is the sensor was worn for 10 days and then changed for a new sensor. Uh, the Libre 14-day came out, so that was nice. You only needed, you know, two in a 28-day period, so it was less time having to put a new sensor on. And just one less thing you had to think about for a few more days. Uh, the Libre 14 day will probably be going away as they now came out with the Libre 2. And you can see they're different colors, so a little bit different in them. And we're going to talk specifically on what some of the specifics are uh, of what which one you might actually want to see about getting. So how does a CGM work? How does a continuous glucose monitor work? And these are just some examples. On the left is the applicator that helps you apply the Dexcom G6 sensor. And then on the right is the Freestyle Libre, whether it's the Libre 14 day or the Libre 2, um, how the applicator that helps you apply the sensor. So the sensor, once it's applied, literally it's just um, a filament that sits under, just under your skin. The filament is maybe four millimeters long, like hardly any length at all. Um, it's like the width of two human hairs. It's extremely small and it sits in the interstitial fluid of your cells. Let's look at the next slide. I think I have a picture, yeah. So you can see the filament up there, the sensor filament is less than 0.4 millimeters thick and it's like less than like four millimeters, I think they said in length. And it sits in the interstitial fluid between your cells. It does not set in the bloodstream. As you can see, the capillary is way below where this would actually be. So it's constantly checking your blood sugar through the fluid between your cells. It's continually taking readings. Um, each one of the um, continuous glucose monitors, whether it's a Dexcom or a Libre, uh, checks or is continually taking readings of your blood sugar, depending on which one it is, every five minutes or every one minute. And then the readings from this sensor, from the sensor on top with that filament actually in your interstitial fluid is sending the message of those blood sugar readings wirelessly either to uh, one of the readers, and we'll look more at those in a little bit, or to your uh, smartphone. If you have a smartphone and you can download apps on your phone, then you can actually have it sent to your phone. So each one of the continuous glucose monitors have their own guidelines for where the, the sensor can be placed. Um, on the left is the, is the Libre, and it has to be or should be put on the upper arm. Uh, I know there are people who tell me that they put it on their abdomen or on their thigh. They can do that, but what Freestyle will tell you is they will not, they will not back up and say, yes, that, uh, that's a good place to put it, and you're going to get accurate blood sugars. They're going to say, no, we did the research. It was on the arm, and that's where it really should be worn. So that's what I always tell all my patients. It needs to be worn on the arm for safety, for accurate results. And there's plenty of room on the arm because you can go on one arm, one for 14 days, and then on the other arm for 14 days. And you can, as you're going back and forth switching arms, you're going to not build up scar tissue. So there's plenty of room on the arm and the upper back of the arms to wear these sensors every 14 days. And then on the right, you got the um, Dexcom and it can be worn on the abdomen. It can be worn on the uh, thigh and can even be worn on the upper buttocks. It can be the lower back, upper buttocks. It can be worn on the arm, uh, abdomen, uh, many other places. So there are more options with the Dexcom. It's a little bit larger um, and it has a 
transmitter with it. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more here in a little bit. So um, a little bit different, but definitely certain places that each one of the continuous glucose monitor companies say that their sensors can be worn. So that's important for to think about. Uh, I've got patients who you know, work on heating and cooling and they don't want the Dexcom because they're crawling around under houses and having it on their abdomen might cause it to come off. Well, like they can put it on their arm. So that's an option. And I've got some patients who don't want to wear it on their arm. They want more flexibility of where they can actually put this sensor. So then they choose the Dexcom. So that's one of the ways, one of the things you start looking at to determine which one of the uh, continuous glucose monitors you might be interested in. So, you know, what's the benefit of having a continuous glucose monitor? I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, you're seeing commercials about it. It's, it's, I'm having more and more patients come and ask me about them. The first continuous glucose monitor I put on a patient was like, I want to say three years ago now. Yeah, three, three years ago. And, he, you know, that patient actually, you know, we had been talking about it and then he saw some commercials and then it's just like, we just, hey, let's do it. You're the first patient. Let's give it a try. The doctor was willing to work with us. And that was a Libre 10. So that's been a long time ago. But what's the big deal? I mean, you know, yeah, you get it. You know, what, what is the benefit to this? Why not just continue to stick your finger? Well, again, the number one thing that patients say and the reason they want to continue the glucose monitor is so they don't have to stick their fingers. You know, to us, maybe who don't stick, have to do a blood sugar check on our fingers every day, maybe it's not a big deal. We think, what's the big deal? But think about someone who's had blood, who's had diabetes since they were age you know, three. I mean, yeah, there's other ways of checking blood sugar through through time, but, you know, even a last, say for 30 years, you've been checking blood sugar in your fingers. Fingers can become calloused. It hurts. You know, it's just not the most fun thing to do. And so patients really want a continuous glucose monitor mainly so they don't have to stick their fingers with the lancets. But what's funny is kind of funny or interesting, the doctors actually, their number one reason um, of why they want their patients to have a continuous glucose monitor is they mention better data. And data, we use the word data just to, as a word as it's information. It's all those blood sugars you know, that we can get from um, what the con continuous glucose monitor is monitoring. So we call that data. You know, What kind of information can we get or what kind of data? Um, we have found that patients do a better job of monitoring their blood sugar when they can scan a sensor multiple times during the day um, than having to stick their finger. Um, they, so there's better self-management of blood sugar. They make decisions better on what to do, whether or not to eat something or to eat something if blood sugar is going low or how much insulin to give. So doctors also, also have said they found it's safer medication changes when they actually have to make changes in insulin or any other kind of medica diabetic medication. It's based on objective information, and we're going to look at some examples here in a little bit. Uh, so it's no longer a patient comes into the doctor's office and says, hey, uh, I woke up this morning, my blood sugar was 300, or I get a lot of this. I bottomed out the other day. Okay, Well, bottoming out is different for everybody. Everybody calls it different. You know, it could be 80 or it could be 40. I mean, so just a verbal is not always the most accurate. You really have to probe to get some more information, but a continuous glucose monitor one thing, my very first patient, I put, I like to quote him, I, the one, the first one that tried the continuous glucose monitor, he mentioned in one of our diabetic groups, he said, you cannot lie about your blood sugars anymore. So there's no more lying about blood sugars. Uh, the continuous glucose monitor is objective data, and that makes it safer for the patient and safer for the doctors as they actually start making changes in medication. So this is what we used to get. And hey, patients work hard at keeping blood sugars, writing them down. But, you know, if you look through these blood sugar logs, there's missing information, there's missing days, missing times for blood sugar. Um, you know, it's kind of vague. It's not real objective. It's still having to kind of make some guesses on just from what was written down. And even some people write specific notes of why blood sugar may have been high or low. And that is all very helpful uh, and definitely much better than just coming in and say, hey, my blood sugar has been high or my blood sugar has been low. That doesn't tell as much. These blood sugar logs definitely give us some information that's helpful. But let's think about this. If we compare the number of blood sugars normally a person does in a 24 hour period, you know, most of the time your doctor will ask you to check your blood sugar possibly once a day, maybe twice a day. But the most we could usually ask a patient is four times a day. With a finger stick, we're asking them to do fasting morning blood sugars before you eat any breakfast, before you eat anything, take your blood sugar. 
then we usually ask them to check before each meal and also check before bed. So if you think about that, that's four blood sugars in a day. And that's all we get, four blood sugars in a 24 hour period. Unless something comes up, they have a high or a low and they do another check. With a continuous glucose monitor, if you, for the Libre 14 day or the Dexcom G6, um, you're gonna get 288 blood sugars because it is checking your blood sugar every five minutes. Every five minutes, it's monitoring what is your blood sugar doing? So I did some math there and I asked my, the person I share the office with if I did the math right, I hope this is right. Anyway, 24 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, gives you 144 divided by every five minutes, gets you 288 readings a day. That's a whole lot more in a 24 hour period than four. Libre 2 is the Libre 2 is checking your blood sugar or monitoring your blood sugar every minute. So if we take the 24 hours times 60 minutes, you get 1,444 blood sugars in a 24 hour period for providers to look at, for you to look at and can consider how am I managing my blood sugar. Um, it's also checking your, and monitoring your blood sugar while you sleep. Clearly that's not something that's happening with doing a finger stick unless somebody is doing that for you, <laughs> waking you up and doing a finger stick or if you're doing that. So clearly the CGM is gonna offer a little bit more safety, a lot more data, and that both makes your doctor and should make you, uh, if you're monitoring your blood sugar, very happy. A lot more data to work with. Uh, if you were interested in getting a continuous glucose monitor, what, you know, which one should you choose? Well, you need to really consider cost. You need to think about your insurance. If you have an insulin pump, we might want to go with a Dexcom, but you don't have to. Um, if you're having high blood sugars and low blood sugars, we probably want to make sure that you have a glucose monitor that will alarm if you go high or low. Uh, certain ones will alarm. Certain ones do not have an alarm. You want to think of how easy is it to use? Uh, and then also placement of the sensor. Do you want, do you mind just wearing it just on your upper arms? Do you want the flexibility of putting it in different places like the Dexcom um, can afford? So there's just some things to think about if you're actually serious about uh, getting a continuous glucose monitor. And, and we're always here to help. We have care coordinators at every one of our offices who can help you with this, or I can go to the every clinic uh, in the Valley Professional and I can meet with you and we can always talk more about um, continuous glucose monitors and what might be best for you. So let's look closer at the three, what I say the most popular continuous glucose monitors because these are the ones that all of our patients have and keep asking about. So let's look a little closer at them so we can see what, you know, what are the benefits, what are the drawbacks. If we start with the Freestyle Libre 14 day, um, it's very simple to apply. It's simple to set up. Uh, two pieces of equipment, really, the sensor and then the reader. Uh, it does take 60 minutes to warm up. So you can see in the picture on the side, there's a person using the applicator to put the sensor on their upper arm. And after you do that, you'll scan it with the reader. And the reader is just about the size of the normal, you know, glucose meters that you use to check your, you know, to do a blood finger stick. So very simple to use, very um, easy just to scan and it gives you your um, blood sugar, but it does take 60 minutes to warm up. There's no calibration. What that means is it does not require you to do a finger stick to put into the meter for it to calibrate. When you put that sensor on, that sensor for 60 minutes is monitoring your blood sugar and trying to determine what is your normal blood sugar? What is high, what is low, what's going on in your body with your blood sugar? That's what that 60 minute warm up time is. You cannot do a uh, blood sugar law. You can't check your blood sugar during that 60 minutes. You would have to do a finger stick, but there is no calibration. After that 60 minutes, you should be good to go. Uh, the 14 day, the Libre 14 day is monitoring or checking your blood sugar every five minutes. So let's say you do it, you scan it and you get a blood sugar reading and you want to scan it again immediately. Well, you can, but there's a good chance it won't be a different number until five minutes later when it does another scan. So, but every five minutes, it's checking your blood sugar. The sensor that's on your arm can hold up to eight hours of information. So you can go to the store, you can scan before you leave to go to the store, you can go to the store, come back and still you're going to have information stored in that sensor that once you wave the reader across the sensor will download all that information. So you won't lose any blood sugar readings. You can shower with it on, not a problem. You can go swimming. I think they suggest no longer than like 30 minutes at a time so that it doesn't lose its tackiness so the sensor doesn't come off. 
The thing with the Libre 14 is it does not have alarms for highs and lows. So if you are having trouble with high blood sugar and low blood sugar, we probably want to try a different uh, continuous glucose monitor because this one's not going to alarm and let you know, hey, you're going high or you're going low. You do have to remove the sensor for x-rays, CT, MRIs, PET scans. And the only reason they have you do that, it's not going to harm you or the machine. But what they, they did not do, they didn't do research to see if you're actually, go, if you have an x-ray or a CT with the sensor on, they're not sure if it might damage the sensor. So you would not get accurate blood sugar readings. So um, that's the only thing that that's why they would want you to remove it. Um, the good thing to me, one of the good things is you can share your blood sugars with your doctors. Once you have a continuous glucose monitor, we can set it up so that if you're willing, as you, you know, scan your, your sensor, um, if you download your blood, your Libre at home, we can get access or you can come into the office and we can download it for you, whatever works for you. But if we can remotely, meaning you can be at home and we can actually, you can share your blood sugars from home with your doctor, with Valley Professional, and actually any doctor, even your specialist, if you have a specialty doctor that wants to see your blood sugars, they can set up an account and they can actually see your blood sugars remotely. So that's the Libre 14 day, some good things. And, you know, I think the one thing to me that's a little bit, um, the downfall of the Libre 14 is it doesn't have the alarms. But the free, that's one of the good things of the Libre Two, the Freestyle Libre 2 came out, um, I think last year. Um, it's the same thing, simple to apply, simple to set up. There's only two pieces of equipment, the reader and the sensor. This has got a telephone, that's a smartphone that's with it. So there's not three pieces of equipment, it's just that you can use your smartphone. The sensor lasts 14 days, so you're changing it only every 14 days. It does take 60 minutes to warm up. Again, no calibration. This one's checking your blood sugar every minute. So again, every minute it's taking a reading. Again, more data, more accurate information. And another good thing, it has alarms for highs and lows. You can set those. There are limits. They're not gonna let you set it like for 20 and then go that low. So there are limits, but you can't go below like, I don't remember, I think it's 40, which to me is kind of low, but you can set it for 50 or you can set it for 80 or you can set it for 100 for the low. You can set the high for 200, but I think again, there's a high where they won't let you go up to 500. So, um, but the amazing thing is it will alarm for highs and lows. Same thing for shower and swimming. Uh, the Libre 2 um, is, is indicated for anyone age four and above is what I found. And I'm pretty sure the Libre 14 was for 18 and above. I don't know if they've changed that age or not. And I didn't have that on the last slide, but I have it on another slide coming up. Um, it does not have an app yet for a smartphone. They have it in Europe. So we're going to get it here in the United States. We just haven't yet, at least in the last two weeks, we haven't. Um, but yes, there will be an app for your smartphone. And until then, we can do downloads in the office or you can download onto a computer. Same thing, you wanna remove it if you're gonna have any kind of testing and you can share your blood sugars with your doctor. The Dexcom G6, the third one that's used the most, office in our, the most often in our offices, the only difference with it is it's got three pieces of equipment. So it's got the sensor and you can see um, down there, I think that's a number two on it. That's a sensor. It's got a transmitter also that's part of the sensor. And then it has the receiver, which is just the watch, the receiver in the middle, the number three or your smartphone. Um, so it's got three pieces of equipment you kind of have to keep track of. That's a little bit cumbersome. It's not a big deal. Um, but the G7 that's coming out will no longer have a transmitter. So that's nice. Uh, the warm-up time for a Dexcom is, a, is up to two hours, so that's a little different than the 60 minutes that the Libre offers. It is checking your blood sugar every five minutes. It does have alarms for highs and lows. Same thing, it's water resistant for shower and swimming. It definitely has an app for your telephone so that you can scan it um, just with your phone. This one is indicated for ages two and above, so it can go even for the younger, for very young children. Um, again, removing it for any kind of testing. But the main thing with I thought was kind of cool with this is you can share your blood sugar with your doctor, but also you can share it with family members. And I can't remember if it's up to 10 people who can actually get access to your blood sugars as you're scanning it on their smartphones. So again, it's just downloading an app, which we can help you with that. Uh, get the app downloaded and start get used. It's very easy to do and very easy to set up. So uh, a few different things, uh, I think a little different. I didn't mention in here, but I think I mentioned in the next slide that I do want to mention here with the Dexcom, they will tell you, you don't have to do a finger stick to calibrate, but I can tell you from patient experience that you will possibly have to do some calibrations and do a finger stick. So all that means is you'll do a finger stick and it'll ask you to enter the blood sugar manually into the reader or to your cell phone. 
And it just, it's because it's at the point where it's just not knowing for sure what's going on with your blood sugar and it wants to do a check, a finger stick check. So there are times that you will have to do uh, a finger stick with the Dexcom. And uh, in the, on their website, which I referenced later, it actually says no finger sticks, but then at the very bottom, it's written in small print. It'll, it'll say you might have to do finger sticks. So that to me is a little bit of a downfall for a G, for the Dexcom, um, but there's other positives about it. So, you know, you, again, you'll just have to, you know, weigh what it is that you're interested in and what works for your lifestyle. So this is where I took all three of them. I took the Libre 14 day, the Libre two and the Dexcom, and I kind of put them in a, you know, in their columns. So you can kind of compare and contrast all on one page. I highlighted a few of the things that I thought were kind of important to me. The age is important. Um, the alarms to me are important. Uh, and the main, I highlighted on the Libre, Libre 14 day, it does not alarm because to me, that's, we might, if you're wanting alarms, we need to move on to the Libre 2 or the Dexcom. Um, anyway, I thought this might be helpful, just kind of a quick uh, reference of if you're thinking of getting a continuous glucose monitor or for someone else, they can look through this and see kind of circle, you know, what works for them. So really, no matter which continuous glucose monitor you choose, this is what you're going to get. You are going to get kind of, and this is just a still a print, you know, of one picture of blood sugars, but it's no longer that point in time. If you remember when we talked early on in this presentation with the glucose monitors, when you stick that blood on the end of that uh, glucose strip, that is that point in time. That is it. That second is that blood sugar. If you were to recheck your finger, a different finger or whatever, you're going to have a different blood sugar. So that's kind of the difference in that this continuous glucose monitor, this is just one bit of data. We get pages and pages of data, but this is one we look at often. And this is the same patient um, early in the year. I don't remember if it's 2020, I think. And then later in the month, I think it was December um, of 2020. And then December, then later in the month of December, and you can see as changes were made to, to blood to medication, blood sugar improved. But you can see the time, and it goes from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. So right in the middle is 12 p.m. Well, what usually happens around 12 p.m., we all eat lunch, and that's why blood sugar goes up. And then you can see it goes down, and then you can see around 6 to 7 p.m., we have another rise in blood sugar. What's going on? Probably dinner. You know, clearly there's no longer coming in and saying, hey, I'm I'm going high, I'm dropping or whatever. We actually have the blood sugars on the side. So that those that were above after lunch and dinner actually went above 250 sometimes, not always, but sometimes. The dark blue line in the middle is the average line. So that's all of the blood sugars every, and I believe this, this is a Libre. So let's just say a Libre 14 day, let's say every five minutes, that dark blue line is the average of all those every five minutes of checking a blood sugar. So you get an idea of more of like a video of what's going on with blood sugar. And then you can see on the second uh, picture, blood sugars have calmed down a little bit. We still have a rise at lunch and a rise after lunch around dinner time. But again, we're gonna expect that to some extent, but we wanna flatten those lines and we wanna flatten the average line. And we wanna get it between the 70 and the 180. And that's where that's headed. So that's after just a month of adjusting medications. Uh, so this is one thing that we do, I do with Dr. Rico and all the providers here at Valley Professionals. If you have a continuous glucose monitor, we look at it almost every two weeks. If I can you know, look at it remotely, I'm looking at it about every two weeks and I'm taking it to the doctor and going, hey, this is what's going on. Do you want to make changes? And then we contact the patient, see if they want to make changes. So it's, it's, we're not letting it go to six months. We see you again at your follow-up or three months. We're actually taking care of it about every two weeks. And so we're getting blood sugars that are getting under control you know, and well-controlled a little bit faster. And then I spend a lot of time educating patient, you know, the patient and anybody who's interested on all of the reports. Um, it actually is very eye-opening. We can go day by day. This is just over 14 days. This is what blood sugar looks like. Here's another one. Uh, this is what a Dexcom report kind of would look like. Again, there's a whole lot more data. I didn't want to that can be a whole nother presentation, but this is what, again, the beginning of November 2020, we had a patient, and this is what was going on with his blood sugar in the first picture, and then you can see, look at breakfast, that's again, that's the same thing, 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., so early on in the day is probably breakfast, um, and you know what's going on at breakfast has got some high blood sugars, but then you can see in the November, we had worked on that, and he really is getting pretty much a, that flat line, which is, is good for blood sugar to have that flat line between 70 and 180. So again, this is just a picture, no longer just a point in time with a blood sugar 
oh, my blood sugar was 300. No, we don't look at that anymore. We look at what's going on over time. How is blood sugar being managed? Do we have a lot of highs and lows? Um, you know, or is it staying pretty steady? And that's really kind of important because I, this is so important. Like a lot of times you'll go the, to the doctor and they'll say, oh, your A1C in this case was seven. Um, so the many faces of an A1C that's seven, everybody thinks that's great. That's kind of what our goal's always been. That's an average blood sugar of 154. But look at what that can look like when you look at a continuous glucose monitor. Again, that very first picture of what it looks like, 40% high, 40% in range, and 20% low. That also would come up as an A1C of seven. In the middle, here's another example. 25% high blood sugars, 70% time in the range, in a good range, well-controlled, 5% low. Again, that's an A1C of seven. And so is this last one where a person's 100% in range. That's an A1C of seven. So the A1C has been great. We're very thankful we've had it, but it's not as accurate as what a CGM can, a continuous glucose monitor can do for you. This is going to give us a better picture of what your blood sugar is doing all the time. Um, and so, you know, it, that 70% in range in the middle is good, but we don't like the 5% low. We need to get rid of those. We don't want you to feel bad and have low blood sugar and deal with that. You know, in that first one, 40% range is not, we try to get to 70%, but that 20% low, that person's staying a lot of time in the low and that has to feel pretty bad. So again, all of those same things equal, you know, all of it looks so different, equal the same thing of, a, of an A1C of seven. We're kind of getting away from talking about A1Cs as we're moving to continuous glucose monitors. And at some point, you know, in the future, you know that this is where we're headed. Everyone will have those continuous glucose monitors and we'll get rid of the blood glucose monitors where you have to do a finger stick. Um, so, and, you know, so far we're seeing great results from it with our patients. So the question is, is if you're interested in it, will your insurance help with the cost? And I say maybe. It really just takes some time working with your doctor. If you have commercial insurance, then your doctor just needs to send a prescription to your pharmacy, and there's a really good chance your, your insurance is going to help, if not pay for it completely. If you have Medicare and Medicaid, they have a little bit different guidelines. Um, you definitely have to have an office visit in the last six months that was about diabetes and they looked over your diabetic management and how things were going. The office visit note actually has to specifically state you have diabetes, you're checking your blood sugar four times a day, uh, you're making changes to your insulin or your medication based on blood sugar readings. Um, oftentimes you have to have three months of blood sugar logs showing that you're checking your blood sugar four times a day. Uh, you, they say you have to be on insulin. And we have to send those orders the med for Medicare and Medicaid through what we call a DME or a durable medical equipment company, such as like US Meds or Edge Park. Um, so, you know, those with those things in mind, that doesn't mean that you couldn't possibly get it if you didn't meet all these qualifications. Those are some of the things that Medicare and Medicaid are saying right now we'd like for you to have. I've had patients who weren't doing those and were able to get a continuous glucose monitor. I have patients who are doing those all perfectly and still they're being told they can't have a continuous glucose monitor. So I think the best thing to do is if you're interested, talk to your doctor, have a, if you're you know, diabetic, if you're a patient of Valley Professional, you know, give us a call and we can, you can meet with me and we can see if um, you uh, can meet the guidelines or we can get started on it. And, um, you know, if you're ready for a continuous glucose monitor, that's that's the way we'd have to just try and see if we could if we could get insurance to work with us and actually help pay for it. And if if not, there's always an op option of paying cash for your freestyle Libre. And the reason I put the freestyle Libre is it's it's more affordable than like the Dexcom. Um, the pre a prescription would just need to be sent to your pharmacy. Um, it's not run through your insurance. So you would be paying cash. And these are just estimates. I'm not 100% sure anymore. Every time I call a pharmacist, it seems like I get a little bit different price. But we can always call ahead of time and find out the exact price. But it's the reader that you would need to scan the sensor would be between 70 and 80. And the sensors would be around $60 per sensor. And you're going to need two of those in a 28-day period, so around 120 a month. Um, you know, but with that reader in mind, if you're going to use your smartphone, you wouldn't necessarily need the reader. So we could download the app on your, your smartphone and you would just have the cost of the sensors. So again, that's always an option if um, you're very interested and your insurance just isn't ready to, to come on board and help out and pay for that. We can, we can see if we could go the cash pay. I included some resources just if you're wanting to find out more information about it. Of course, the Freestyle website, the Dexcom website, they have videos and of how to apply this, uh, the sensor and, and you know 
more detailed information. I think diatribe is always um, really nice to look at. They have all kinds of information there. And the thing I like there is they're always reviewing the newest equipment. Uh, the American Diabetic Association is always a good place to go. You can count on getting you know, accurate information at that site. So these are just some sites you might be interested in. And if you wanna find out more information about continuous glucose monitors. All right, so I don't know if anybody has any questions. Um, let me. Okay, it looks. I don't see anybody that has any questions. So if anybody had any questions, um, you need to put them in the chat box and send them. Just hit, type it in and hit enter. Um, if there's no questions, then um, here in a second, we'll close out. And um, if you have any questions afterwards, you can always call Valley Professionals, ask for Jill Slavin, and I'd be glad to, to see what I can do to, to help out answering any of your questions. All right, well, we'll just close out then. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, so uh, one of our participants is asking, does a type, type two diabetic need a continuous glucose monitor? So that's one of the big things, I'm glad you asked that. One of the big things that our insurance companies are saying, oh, you have to be a type one diabetic. And that's the type one diabetic, as most of you probably know, is that someone who's had diabetes, usually, not always, but since they were young, I mean, the main difference between type one and type two is the type one, the insulin, from the pancreas, they're just not getting any insulin at all. Or type two still has some insulin possibly being um, coming from the pancreas. So that's kind of the difference. But the, the main thing is this, is that <clears throat> even, you know, diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. It is not gonna get, it's, it's, it, you can be well controlled and you're gonna be, you're gonna do fine, but it is progressive. That means at some point it will continue to possibly worsen or medications will have to be added. And after years and years of checking blood sugar and doing finger sticks, it can become very tiring to do that. And people stop doing it. You know, it hurts. It's not fun. It's, it's something you have to take with you when you go, you know, to this to, out to eat or whatever. It's just something people kind of stop doing. And when you stop monitoring your blood sugar, you don't even know what your blood sugar is doing. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know that anybody has to have a, a continuous glucose monitor. But what I found is that um, if you are finding that you are on a blood sugar is, is not as well controlled, meaning it should really be between, in our case, most of the doctors say 80 to 120, 80 to 140. On a continuous glucose monitor, they allow like 70 to 180 as the well controlled or the time and range. Um, so as far as someone needing it, they probably don't have to have it. Even someone with an insulin pump doesn't have to have a continuous glucose monitor. They can do a finger stick and they can enter that into their insulin pump. But what it does is it actually just makes, to me, it makes life a little easier. It makes it a little easier for someone who has a chronic progressive disease. It actually, besides making life easier, to me, it actually makes you safer. It actually keeps you more aware of what your blood sugar is doing. You can respond to it before it gets too low or too high. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of times insurances are wanting to re refuse to give them to people that have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And I think insurances are going to have to change their ways because this is becoming more of what's being talked about. They're seeing the benefits. They're seeing how well controlled someone is on a continuous glucose monitor when they actually use it. You know, it doesn't just happen magically. You still have to do some work when you have a, a CGM and you're scanning the, the sensor and paying attention to what it says on the reader and what the blood sugar is and reacting to it. Um, but they're finding great benefits. And so no, no one actually needs or has to have a continuous glucose monitor. You can continue to do finger sticks um, but it just makes life a little easier. And I think making it easier and then to me, making it safer as our doctors make changes in medication and when mo with monitoring, making better decisions at home to self-management, then you got the best, you know, best of both worlds, safety and, you know, a little bit easier life. So no, it is not required. No one has to have a continuous glucose monitor um, to be able to manage blood sugar. Great question. Thanks. Anybody else? I don't see any other questions. So if that's it, we will close up this first um, education clinic. Um, we're going to try to have them, I think, every month. But again, like I said, send your ideas if you have anything you'd like to learn more about. We're going to try and get Dr. Rico on here, the endocrinologist. That way you'll have him at, 
be able to ask any questions you want of a board certified endocrinologist. And so we look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you for attending. <laughs>